U.S. military officials gathering with their counterparts for more than 40 other nations to discuss the security situation. Secretary Austin saying this morning Ukraine believes it can win the war, and so does the U.S. So joining me right now is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley. General, thanks so much for taking the time this morning. Jim, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. It's good to have you on. You it, me, this phrasing that, Gen that Secretary, Secretary Austin used yesterday, the goal of weakening Russia, has the U.S. aim in this conflict expanded beyond just helping Ukraine defend itself to an aim of degrading Russia's military so it cannot attack other countries? Yeah, thanks, Jim, for that. The uh, First, I want to uh, thank you for just being in Lviv and covering the war. The media coverage has been really critical uh, to making sure the truth gets out about what is happening. Uh, as you know, and we all know now, the entire world knows, uh, there's an unprovoked war of aggression by Russia on a much smaller country. Uh, with respect to what we're trying to do, uh, the United States and all of the allied countries, and we just finished a conference with uh, about 40, 42 countries from around the world, not just NATO, uh, to coordinate and synchronize continued and sustained uh, military lethal and non-lethal support uh, to Ukraine in their fight for freedom. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, what we want to see, what uh, I think the policy of all of our governments together, uh, is a free and independent Ukraine with their territory intact uh, and their government standing. Uh, and and the, uh, the Russian aggression has been halted and stopped. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think that's going to involve a weakened Russia, a strengthened uh, NATO, and as you see, you know, Finland and Sweden and other countries, and the unity of the West and the unity of NATO and, indeed, the unity of the globe has probably never been stronger than it is in the face of this unprovoked aggression. So that's where we're heading. As you look at uh, Russian forces, focus their attention now on the eastern part of the country in the south, have they made sufficient adjustments in terms of for instance, supply lines, but also command and control to have more success in the east than they had in the north around Kyiv? That remains to be seen, Jim. As you know, they struggled mightily with command and control, fighting at night, uh, establishing air supremacy and air uh, superiority. They, they had a real difficult time with logistical resupply uh, and a wide variety of other challenges and issues. Most of that was caused uh, by the bravery, the, the, the talent, the the skill uh, of the Ukrainians uh, on the ground and fighting in accordance with the training that NATO and other allies have given them over many, many years. Uh, so war is a two-way street. Uh, there's action, reaction, counteraction. And uh, the first part of this operation, the strategic attempt to seize Kiev in a, in a lightning uh, strike, the attempt to untopple the Zelensky government failed. And now what the Russians are trying to do is essentially envelop and then crush uh, about half of the Ukrainian army down around the line of contact. Uh, the Ukrainians are set. They're they're ready for uh, this fight, and uh, our task here in the in NATO and in the West is to continue to support Ukraine in their fight for freedom. You, you've heard the comments from the Russian Foreign Minister just in the last 24 hours, saying that Russia does not want to artificially inflate the nuclear risk, but he called the risk serious. And you've heard comments on Russian state TV uh, where, where they even celebrate that prospect to some degree. I wonder. Has the U.S. seen any unusual or new, or new movements of Russian nuclear forces or weapons that would indicate that that commentary is more than just rhetoric? Well, any time a senior leader of a nation state starts rattling a nuclear saber, uh, then everyone takes it seriously. And it's uh, completely irresponsible for any senior leader to be talking like that uh, in today's world. Uh, we are monitoring, as a military, we're monitoring very closely with all of our friends and allies, and we take those things very seriously. Short of a nuclear risk, you testified before Congress a short time ago that the potential for significant international conflict is increasing, not decreasing. I'm quoting you. Since then, Russia has issued a diplomatic protest to the U.S. and NATO to stop its weapons shipments. Has that increase in military support, in your view, increase the danger of direct conflict between the U.S. and Russia? Yeah, I actually think it's the opposite. I think that uh, what's at stake here is much greater than Ukraine. What's at stake is uh, the security of Europe. This is the greatest challenge to the security of Europe since the end of World War II. 
And indeed, uh, you could easily make the case that what's at stake is the global international security uh, order that was put in place in 1945. Uh, that international order has lasted 78 years. It's prevented great power war. And under, underlining that entire uh, concept is the idea that large nations uh, will not conduct military aggression against smaller nations. Uh, and that is exactly what's happened here, an unprovoked military aggression by Russia against a smaller nation. So if this is left to stand, uh, if there is no answer to this aggression, uh, if Russia gets away with this cost free, uh, then so goes the so-called international order. And if that happens, then we're ending into an era of seriously increased instability. So right now, it's the, now is the time, and, and right now is the opportunity here to stop aggression uh, yeah. and to restore peace and security to the European continent. Throughout your service and your command, you've been vigilant about the threat of disinformation, uh, particularly for, from a nation such as Russia. We've seen a whole host of it in this conflict so far. Uh, when you see some of that disinformation repeated by Americans in American circles, including, for instance, this uh, false charge about the U.S. funding chemical weapons uh, operations here in this country, what's your reaction to that? Uh, propaganda and disinformation, Jim, as you know, as a student of warfare, <clears throat> that has been around since the earliest days of recorded time. Uh, and today, the means and mechanisms of disinformation and propaganda are fundamentally different with uh, television or print media or social media, etc. Uh, but the idea of disinformation, of spewing propaganda out, uh, has been around for a long time. Uh, and that is happening today. The Russians are doing it on a continual basis, not only in Europe, but around the world. Uh, to make their case for what is a completely unjustified attack on a smaller nation. General Mark Milley, we appreciate you taking the time and we appreciate your service. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Ambassador, I want you to listen to uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, Mark Milley, General Mark Milley, in which he says that an unchecked Putin um, has uh, serious consequences for far more than Ukraine, uh, the world. Uh, listen to what he said. There is no answer to this aggression. Uh, if Russia gets away with this cost free, uh, then so goes the so called international order. And if that happens, then we're ending into an era of seriously increased instability. So, right now, it's the, now is the time, and, and right now is the opportunity here to stop aggression uh, and to restore peace and security to the European continent. Mr. Ambassador, that's exactly what President Zelensky has been saying for more than two months now. Uh, but his argument is that the world is not coming in aggressively enough to protect that global stability. To, to that, you say what? Victor, I know it's, it's a good point that uh, General Milley made. And I think what you have seen over the last nine weeks uh, since Russia launched this unprovoked and unjustified war on Ukraine is that the world is doing more. So originally, there was a focus on providing things like Stinger anti-aircraft missiles and Javelin anti-armor missiles, because those were things that the Ukrainian military could use very quickly without a lot of training. But now, as it looks like this war may drag on and it may take months, you now see the West beginning to provide things like armor, uh, the United States providing heavy artillery, so weapons that will allow the Ukrainian military with some training, and they'll now take, have to take the time to do that, but to do a better job of defending themselves and continue what the Ukrainian military has been doing, which is really frustrating Russian goals. Uh, you look at the original Russian invasion plan, and it failed. And, and now the Russians are concentrating just on Donbass. But given the determination and the tenacity the Ukrainians have demonstrated, if they have continued Western support and weapons, they can, fail, they can foil the Russian operation in Donbass as well.